within this project we uh, find 16 um, susceptible genes for uh, lupus for the Chinese population. Wow. Yes. Use polygenic risk score and machine learning to do the prediction. To do the prediction of a disease for different, for, for, uh, for the specific population. Because we cannot use the genetic data of European population to predict the uh, disease in Chinese population. Even though someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? What's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host Alan Sakyan. We are on site in the beautiful Westlake University in Hangzhou, China. We are now going to be talking about Chinese population genetics. We have Dr. Hao Feng Zheng joining us on the show. Hi, yeah. Wang. Yeah, thank Hello. you. Thank yeah. you so much for coming yeah. on our show. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited. It was great getting a nice <laughs> tour of your lab and what you guys are working on here. Mm -hmm. Congrats on all the progress. For those that don't know, Ho Feng Zheng is principal investigator at Westlake University researching bioinformatic tools for the analysis of large genetic data and complex disease. And you can find the links in the bio. All right. Let's start things off with one of our favorite questions we like asking our guests. Okay. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Um, the direction of our world. Um, yeah, th this question is too hard to answer, I think. Um, <laughs> um, as a scientist, um, what we want to figure out is um, how human come from and how we where go. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a big question we want we would like to work on. Yes. Right? Not only um on, on, on the nature, but also on the uh, the society or the uh, humanity, I think. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't have an exact answer where did we uh, come this one. from? Where are we going? Yeah. yeah. This is this question is so big. I love the question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I will always wonder what are some of the main principles that we can embody to help us make yeah. sure that it's going in a positive direction. Right. What, right. what what do you think maybe one of the key principles is? Um uh, Maybe in nature selection. Um, uh, 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 I, I, I do research on complex disease, right? You know, yes. so um, uh, the development of complex disease um, can be explained by uh, nature selection. Oh, uh, one kind of nature selection, that's, uh, uh, that's negative selection. Mm. Yeah. 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 Whoa. So something that humans can potentially do is try and move further away from negative selection where there may be some of the things that cause suffering or disease or things like this and we can maybe move ourselves more in a direction of flourishing away from the complex disease which is some of the stuff that you're trying to do is help, yeah help us heal um help us eradicate things like osteoporosis and these types of things Maybe yeah this is great. yeah yeah let's talk about the journey so who were you as a kid and how did you get interested in genetics and science you mean who made me feel interested in uh, genetics yeah. or science? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's a long story, and you know, um, I, my, my my actually my father uh, he picked um, this 
uh, he helped me to choose my major when I finished my uh, high school. Mm-hmm. And he expect me to be a doctor. Mm-hmm. And actually I uh, major on the clinical uh, medicine and I, fin- I finished my MD degree yes. uh, in China. And, but after my MD degree, I um, didn't uh, actually become a doctor. I chose to do research um, because I, at that time, I did research on genetics of skin disease, mm. like lupus. Mm-hmm. And after my uh, PhD, I continue to do genetics, but not on skin disease, uh, but on the on, on the bone uh, disease, bone health. Yes. Like osteoporosis. Yes. Yes. So let's talk about you know as you find yourself getting more and more interested in you know in clinical medicine and then in population genetics and in, uh, in, in helping people with disease, you made some pretty serious discoveries along the way. Mm-hmm. In, in the, so the MD was from uh, Binjo Medical University. Yeah. And in the, Shandong University, uh, Shandong province. In Shandong province. In, in north of in China. The north of China. Yeah. And then the PhD was from Anhui Medical University. Yes. Okay, and let's talk about the first discovery. So we have several of these discoveries that we're going to talk about. This one was about susceptibility genes for systemic lupus. Yeah. And you did this by a genome-wide study yes. in China. Right. So teach us about how you're finding this. Um, so, um, for example, we uh, to, to find this in order to find the susceptible genes of lupus, we need a, a, a group of cases, patients, and a group of controls, healthy, healthy uh, individuals, mm. to, and to compare the allele frequency of these two groups. Yeah. If a SNP have a very different allele, a dif- very different allele frequency uh, between these two groups, we hypothesize that this SNP is associated with the disease. Yeah. yeah, and within this project, we uh, find sixteen um, susceptible genes for uh, lupus for the Chinese population. Wow. Yes. Okay, so you're given a population-wide um, genetic database and you uh, wh- how many samples were in this one maybe a couple th- how many samples did you have in this one uh, you, you mean this project yeah, the, this the lupus project, project? Yep, yep, in the lupus uh, I think it's 3,000 3,000 yeah okay so you have 3,000 and um, some so some of them have lupus and yeah so- some of them have lupus uh, yes. uh, almost uh, uh, a thousand had lupus yeah wow. and 2000, 2000 did not did not yeah and then what you were doing was you were looking at how, how did you find the you said 14 genes 16 16 yeah. genes okay 16 genes had the strongest susceptibility to having a SNP in them, which is a which is a variant in the genetic code, so an allele, two two alleles for one SNP. Yeah. And how did you identify these sixteen genes? Um, we, uh, you know that in in the whole genome genotype typing data, we have uh, less than a million SNPs, right? And we test. This one million SNP, uh, uh, one by one, mm. tested the association with the uh, disease. 
yeah. one by one and find um, 16. Wow. Uh, not exact 16 because the SNPs, they have LD. That means one SNP, if one SNP exists, then another SNP will exist uh, um, uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, that's LD. But this 16 SNP, they are uh, independent SNP. They have no LD each other, with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, so then you find out these areas of variance that are similar for people with lupus and that people without lupus, the other 2000, don't have the same variance that the ones with lupus do in those 16 genes. Um, actually, it's the frequency difference between cases and controls. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Frequency difference. The fre frequency, a little frequency difference. Yes. Actually, in controls, they also have the allele, but the frequency will be much lower. In, in, in cases, uh, the frequency will be much higher. Interesting. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's the SNP. The SNP means, uh, the SNP didn't mean that uh, it not, uh, it didn't mean it, 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 it didn't exist in controls. It did exist in controls, but the, the frequency much lower. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Okay, okay so the allele um, difference, the allele frequency difference in the um, lupus was higher. Right. Okay, okay. And lower in the control that yeah. didn't have lupus. Yeah. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay. And then, so then, then it was, are, are, I'm curious, for other discoveries as well, is allele frequency difference a pretty good indicator of what a, uh, a, a potentially a discovery of a of a of a variant in a disease is. Yes, that's what we want to say. The 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 allele the allele frequency difference between cases and controls is a pretty good biomarker. Yeah, yeah, it's a biomarker. Yeah, yeah. one of the top biomarkers is allele frequency difference. Right. Interesting. So when you get sequenced, uh, actually yes, the SNP the, is the biomark. The SNP is the biomark. Yes, and there's a there's a greater frequency of SNPs in uh, patients with lupus. In, yeah. in this case. Yeah. So for all of us that are getting our genome sequenced, that we're we we want the some of the things that we want to care about is our um our allele frequency um difference we want to that's that's something that's a big biomarker for okay yeah cool. that's cool. what we want to say let's 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 uh we we let's we how we choose the snips how we choose the snips we choose the snips with very different uh, allele frequency between cases and controls. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's we choose these 16 SNPs. They have very different allele frequency difference. Okay. Yeah. So there's 16 specific SNPs that had the greatest allele frequency difference. Yes. Okay. And then you hypothesize that those were the 16 SNPs that were related to the difference between healthy patients and lupus patients. Yes. And it was right. correct. Right. Yeah. Right. Cool, cool. Okay. Okay, okay. So so then it could potentially be that um, identifying SNPs in genomes and looking at allele frequency differences between healthy populations and the um, disease, disease populations yes. is one of the biggest ways to identify disease. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And was now what were you doing in this next discovery? 
discovering the north-south population structure of Chinese Han population. Mm -hmm. What is, tell us about this. Uh, in this project, we include uh, samples from 10 uh, different Chinese population, uh, 10, 10 Chinese population, uh, province, provinces uh, distribute from north to south. We select 10 provinces from south to north and to see the uh, population structure, um, um, the population structure uh, differences between these uh, 10 provinces. And we, 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 we discovered that uh, there are two dimension distribution uh, of the genetic uh, 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 structure. Yeah, uh, that that means um, um, you, uh, in north from uh, Liaoning, that's a province from uh, north east, mm -hmm. from Liaoning to Shandong, then to uh, uh, Han, uh, Zhejiang, then to Guangdong. Uh, the geography uh, can proxy the genetic. Uh, structure. Yeah. Okay. So, so again, you you had a sample of yeah. How how large was this sample of genetic? Uh, it's six thousand. Six thousand. Six thousand from these ten uh, provinces. provinces. Yes. And five were in the north, and five were in the south, or. Um. um I think uh, yes. Um. Also, they have. Uh, 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 six thousand. Then I think it's two thousand from north, two thousand from south, and also two thousand from middle. Middle. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then, um, when you were analyzing the genetics of those um, six thousand, what were you looking for to determine the difference between North and South Han Chinese? Mm, because we we have already done the whole genome genotyping mm -hmm. and uh, this can provide the information of all the, the genetic information of all these samples yeah. and we, do, we, we, we conduct a, a analysis called principal component analysis mm -hmm. this can identify the, uh, the, the uh, genetic component uh, of the uh, populations of the samples. A principal component analysis? Yeah, principal component analysis. It, it can That's PCA. PCA. Yeah. It can identify the the specific genetic differences between yeah, south and we north can, and south. Because we can use the principal component mm -hmm. to uh, the, the value of the principal component to compare the values of these samples. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and the the big um, the big difference is that you said there was some sort of a of a distribution between clear distribution between who was south. Yeah. 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 And who yes. was north. Yes. If we have a very big reference, uh, we 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 have uh, individuals from each uh, province. Uh, and the, the, the sample size is big, then we can build a least kind of reference. Yes. And a new one come, come here, we can sequence them and to see which province he come wow. from. Yeah. 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 And then there was a postdoc that you were doing at McGill yes. University. Yes. That was in human genetics. Right. And when you were doing that four years, you made another discovery in 2012 to discover the susceptible genes for osteoporosis. Yes. Okay. And this was fracture and thickness of bone in the Caucasian wrist. Yes. Okay. Yes. So s explain this one to us as well. Uh, it's a it's uh it's a osteoporosis related trait, a related disease, mm -hmm. right? Um, um, the the final outcome of osteoporosis is fracture. Yeah, uh, so the, strat the strategy is the same as what we 
have done for the skin disease. We also uh, the, the 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 design is also the same. A group of cases and a group of controls, and to to see the uh, the the um, allele frequency difference. And for this project, wh why um, um, this this project uh, published in Nature? Because uh, we find the rare genetic variant. Because in 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 um, uh, the rare genetic variant is hard to find. Because they are rare, you you know in in um, for example in one thousand samples, maybe the mutation only present in only one individuals, so it's very rare. It's hard to find. So we find the rare genetic variant for osteoporosis. Yes. Yeah. How out of a thousand samples are you able to find just one of the rare genetic mutations? Um, this is just an example. Yeah. Um, actually, it's not uh, only one, maybe several. Okay. Yeah, because we do the genotyping, we do the sequencing and the genotyping. Yes. We know okay. the, 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 we know the allele of each uh, individual. Yeah. We know the allele of each individual. Okay. Yeah. And then you find, and then you know the ones that have osteoporosis, and you see which allele variants. Yeah, they the have. rare genetic variants. The rare genetic variants associated with osteoporosis. osteoporosis. Yeah, and versus the rest of people don't have that. Right. And so then you're able to target that and say that that's probably the right. one. And then right. you maybe look at other people with osteoporosis and see. That they have the same right okay right okay 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 so then in 2015 these happen the, these kind did these happen at the same time the 1000 talents program by the Chinese government and also the um, the UK 10k project which one happened first the UK 10K project, First. yeah, the, because the UK 10K yeah. project they start from uh, they started from 2010 and finished in 2015. So cool. we published this paper in 2015. 15. Yeah. Okay, and then in that UK 10K project in 2015, you found the rare variants for bone mineral density. Yes. Okay, so you were teaching me about this. Um, Bones are made of calcium. Uh, bone yeah. mineral. Beam, is, bone mineral. Yes. Bone mineral is made of calcium. Yes. And then there's bone marrow inside that we were talking about as well, yeah. which I believe has a lot of the stem cells in yes, the body right. and stuff. Okay, so right. the bone mineral density, and this is in uh, grams per square centimeter. Yes. If it's too low, you have higher propensity for osteoporosis yes and a fracture and fracture yeah which leads to fracture yeah, yeah. bone yeah. weakness yes leads to fracture yes um yeah so how did you find out that that this density of of bone mineral was uh that you could figure out based on genetics density of bone minerals um yes because uh yes or no because bone mineral density have a very high heritability uh mm. it's about from uh 15 percent to 85 percent um 50 to 85 yeah, percent yeah yeah of uh, heritability that means uh 50 percent to 85 percent of the bone mineral density variation can be determined by genetics. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, it's also influenced by, uh, by, by, by the envi environmental factors. Yeah. So, um, so the answer is yes or no. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so then um, you were identifying in this UK 10K project specific, is it again, allele variants 
Yes. Yes. For osteoporosis, yes. for bone mineral density being low. right. Okay. Right. Okay. Became the professor at Hangzhou Normal University for two years in 2015, 2017. Mm-hmm. And what were you doing when you were there? Um, Teaching genetics? Um, part of my job is teaching. Um, also, um, research work. And research work. Yeah, and research work. Your papers have been cited 3,400 times. That's massive. Yeah, it's a lot of citations. Yeah, that's the total citation total of my... Citation. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 that's yeah. so cool. And then um, Westlake University in March 2017. So you've been here over two years now. Right. And you've been approaching two and a half. Yeah, that's really cool. It's now two and a half. Yeah, now yeah. it's two and a half. Wow. Yeah. And so... And this has been slow growth process of of acquiring now ten lab members. There's seven PhD students working at the lab. Yes. And now this is going to be this deep dive. There's so much cool stuff here. So bioinformatic tools for the analysis of large genetic data and complex disease. So yes. you were teaching me about this. You said that right now we have this issue with genetics where most of the whole genome sequences in the world are Europeans. Yes, yes. And so the the reference that we have of these 30 million variants are are made for analyzing European genetics. Yes, yes. So there's this idea of genetics for all, right. where you can have, like you have 1.4 billion people in China, another 1. almost 4 in India. Right. And, you know, so the idea is that can you make a a whole genome sequence reference of these 30 million variants for Chinese people yes. and for Indian people yes. and for all these different countries in the world. Yes. So it's not just for European people. Yeah. I like, I love this. So then you had this idea of having the Westlake Biobank for Chinese, right. WBBC. Right. So teach us about why you're doing WBBC, where you guys are at, teach us about it. Yeah, just like you said that um, most of the genetic data now gen- generated, most of them are uh, on the European um, uh, populations. So um, if we would like to do a prediction of disease, we need to um, derive the effect from the uh, specific populations. Like if we want to predict uh, disease for Chinese population, we need to derive the effect from Chinese population. So uh, we, that's why we want to do this wet lake biobank for Chinese to um, th- th- this biobank can be uh, um, can, can produce a lot of data and to produce a lot of effect which can use to predict the disease, I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so as we have more of these uh, biobanks happening for different countries around the world, mm-hmm. you guys hopefully um, going deeper into um, the Chinese biobank, then we can um, better understand the formation of complex disease mm-hmm. and we can help people live healthier, yes, happier yes. lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, where, yeah, let's talk about where you guys are at with that. So um, you've had, you, you're working with universities. Yes. And so universities um, are, um, are the, the blood samples from universities. Yes. So yes. do you guys, take their, do you guys take the blood samples and sequence it yourselves or do they sequence it and give you the data? How does, yeah? Um, we take the uh, samples and we uh, send out to companies, they help us to sequence them. Got it. And they uh, return the data to us. Got it, got yeah. it, okay. So the university, the blood from the universities goes to the company, sequencing companies, which then give you guys right. the data. And then when you guys, you have, 
how many total um, sequences? 4,500 plus the 6,000. So teach us about the total revenue. Right. Yeah. It's about 10K, right? 10,000. Yeah, yeah. And 4,500 are whole genome sequenced, and then 6,000 are whole genome genotype. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. And then now, how are you then um, studying the genetics of bone mineral density mm -hmm. in this? sample that you have mm -hmm. so you're looking for the allele variants of osteoporosis yes okay yes um so the suggest the suggested is a little different from my previous study okay. um in this study we didn't care about which gene it's associated with the disease we use the whole genome uh data uh, to to do the prediction. Then we use the uh, machine learning method to do this prediction. Also the uh, polygenic risk score. Yes. Use polygenic risk score and machine learning to do the prediction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you talk about um, polygenic risk score and machine learning um, applied to whole genome sequencing, mm -hmm. what do you find? that gives you the understanding of osteoporosis? Uh, in fact, this project is still ongoing. Yes. Right. Um, I uh, just start my uh, uh, the laboratory in Westlake for two years. Yes. And it takes me a lot, of, a lot of time to collect all these samples. Yeah. And we just start this project. Hope, hopefully, we can uh, get uh, very good results to help to predict the uh, osteoporosis for the Chinese population. Yes. yes, yes. I love the big vision that you have with it and this is one of the things about science and it needing to be better well funded and also have more world-class research places like Westlake pop up because then you can have more scientists that are doing these long processes that take time, that then yes. can have better computational resources right. and better genetic data bank resources, right. all this type of stuff to help you guys move the pace faster right. in scientific discovery. Right. Okay, so one out of every thousand references, variants that we have is genetic variants. One out of every thousand genetic variants that we have mm. is going to be some sort of a potential formation of a, maybe a disease maybe yeah it's possible yes okay okay so you can be more susceptible to developing the disease but not develop it right yeah you're yeah, right yeah okay. yeah okay okay so i can have um, high allele frequency difference and be susceptible to developing the disease but not develop. Yes. So then it's okay to have um, in a health, some people in the healthy population have high amounts of variance but they don't develop the disease. Y yes. Okay. And then there are other people that yeah, have. Because yeah. this, this is a probability. It's a probability. Yeah, this of is a probability. The yeah, yeah. The, 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 this who, people who uh, carry this allele, they are more susceptible to the gene uh, to the disease. Yeah. But maybe he uh, he didn't de de develop this disease at, at the end, or they die before they develop this disease. Yeah. Yeah. I have let's say an uh, an uh, allele. Uh, variants that um, gives me maybe a 20% probability to develop a disease. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. it's like one in five, it's a little bit lower, so I don't have it. Let's yeah. Say. But you could go the other way and say that, oops, this fifth person got it, the disease, because they, yeah, yeah. You can mm -hmm. have, and you can have different variants, uh, 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 probability, probability. Yes. L that's why we would like to do the prediction. The prediction also a probability. So if, if a person who uh, have uh, uh, at a higher susceptible to the disease, then we, for example, osteoporosis, then we can uh, do the intervention 
of this uh, patients uh, or individuals yes. to um, to uh, prevent uh, the final outcome. Yes. Right. Let's talk about um, the interventions because if. Um, I do have the allele variants and a high probability of developing a, a complex disease. Mm. Um, what are some of the best things that are recommended for people right now for like osteoporosis? Yeah, so for the osteoporosis, um, this, uh, I think the three, three main factors can affect uh, osteoporosis. The first one, the major one is the um, genetic effect, right? We already talked a lot. The second one is the uh, nutrition. The third one is the exercise. So, um, um, so the genetics now we can we we cannot um, w w for for the complex disease. Um, it's hard for us to edit it uh, to edit the uh, genetics the, the the genome. So we can uh, do uh, modify the other two factors, the nutrition and the exercise. Yes. Yeah. So then the behavior changes towards better nutrition and more exercise can help um, decrease the probability of developing right. osteoporosis. Right. And then also down the line, it is possible that we can go with something like CRISPR potentially yeah. and go and make the genetic edit that needs to happen in order to um, also mm, fix the disease of the osteoporosis. Yeah, it's uh, because this is a complex d disease, this yeah. is a complex treat. Yeah. Um, it's not a single point. Yeah, it's not a single point yeah. uh, where it can... We're talking yeah, maybe yeah, like dozens yeah, of points right. of variants. So if we go and Maybe change more, all, than, that, more right. than that, so right. if we go and change all of those, there's potentially effects five years, ten years down the line that we're like, oops, yeah, that could be the problem. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. This is why biology simulations are very important mm -hmm. because if you can simulate what doing those who knows thirty points of of change mm -hmm. are. For to make it a healthier mm -hmm. um, individual without the complex disease of osteoporosis, can you fast forward twenty years and see if the person? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and can yes. you do that millions of times to make sure after twenty right. years they're okay? Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. These are some of my favorite things. These simulations. Okay. Because yeah, um, hopefully we can get to the point where um, we can do it better and better. Um, because then people can live healthier and, yes. and not have to yeah, experience complex disease. Right. Okay, so um, also uh, at the lab is uh, a bunch, there's, so there's people doing different things here. You have, you have people looking at the genetic variants in the Chinese population. Mm -hmm. You have um, a recent study that was finished on alcohol and blood pressure. Yes. Which I found to be very interesting. Yeah. Um, there's, a ver there's a very specific allele variants yes. for people that can not get drunk fast and right. people that get drunk too fast. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. yeah, which is a very interesting study because then some people will know, it's like, why do I keep drinking one glass of wine and I'm drunk already? <laughs> yes. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Because yeah. then you can know that it has to do with your genetics. Right. It's very right. interesting. Right. And the other ones are like, I drink a whole bottle and I'm fine. Yeah. Right. yeah. Why? Yeah. 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 Sometimes we. Yeah. It's cool to know that biology um, and even something um, like allele variants. And this was only at a single point. Of yes, allele it's variant. a single point. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And um, for for those that um, are really interested, it's RS six seventy one. Yeah, RS six seventy one. R S six seven one. Yeah. Yes. For those that are very interested in yeah. that variance, that's cool. And that was in a, a sample of two thousand three hundred forty nine Han Chinese. Yes. Yes. If it's uh, G G, you can drink. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if it's A A, you're gonna have trouble with right. drinking a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, for myself, I already uh, genotype this. My is A G. 
Okay, so you're middle. You're in the yeah, middle. I'm in the middle, but um, I cannot drink a lot. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and there was also another interesting cultural aspect too with women, where um, women are generally in China not drinking so much. So um, a lot of them in the study were uh, yeah yeah even. If, even yeah, if they had GG for drinking a lot, they weren't drinking anyway. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. And then um, another one is doing epidemiology of peak bone mass of Chinese, obviously. Yes. So we actually, actually we, had a, we had a good conversation about this before we started too. Um, the number was, um, the number was quite high. It was, uh, it was 1,500 uh, total mass of skeletal calcium in grams mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was 1,500 for men mm -hmm. between the ages of 20 and 40. Yes. So, so basically, that's the peak bone mass. That's the peak bone yeah. mass. So, yeah. so basically, when you're a child, um, your uh, total skeletal mass in calcium in grams increases very fast. Yes. Until you're like 20. Yeah. And then it like peaks around that 20 to 40 range. Right. For men, it's 1,500 grams. And for women, it's closer to 1,200 yes. grams. And then uh, after 40, um, both men and women start dropping. Yes. And then women have a more significant drop because of menopause. Yes. Yes, yes. I found this to be so, so interesting. Okay. And because you were mentioning this earlier too, there's a 50 to 85% heritability right. of this. Right. Um, so it's very likely that if your um, if your parents have a lower um, amount of total skeletal calcium mass, that you as well will have lower. Right. Um, and so then, I was asking you about this too. Is like okay, so when you're doing this, I mean, is it possible that we can find um, as you guys are doing this this uh, dive into the um, epidemiology of peak bone mass of Chinese? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that you can find um, specific uh, variants um, for people that have um, a higher peak bone mass yeah versus ones that have a lower peak bone mass. yes 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 that's one of our design to in order to find the genetic variant for the peak bone mass and why we want to do this is um, you know most of the drugs uh, treat on osteoporosis Nowadays, they are the drugs trying to slow down the uh, loss of bone. Um, if we can find a gene or a pathway who uh, a, which is a determinant of the pig bone mass, yeah. maybe we can find a drug target. To uh, increase the bone mass, yeah. Because most of the drugs now, they are th their target is to uh, decrease the bone loss. Yeah, to s slow, slow down, slow down the bone loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So we're in a sense we're fighting the osteoporosis with trying to slow down the uh, the bone law the bone density loss yes and we could come up with another solution yeah which is targeting a uh, more bone uh, to density in, yeah to, to increase. increase the bone density interesting yeah but we have to find the variants right first right and then we have to target the drug at um, those variants yeah and, and figure out how to increase the right interesting yeah. so in a sense there's for only, probably for a lot of complex disease there's a couple ways to handle it yes um, and many of the ways we handle complex disease right now is like how do you take in a molecular compound that uh, usually affects more than just uh, mm -hmm. the targeted yeah. area and yes. uh, it um, fights it in a specific way and maybe there's ways that we can take something that um, enables us to fight it in a more optimal way. Right. So discovering those pathways to, for more optimal combating 
complex disease. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so then um, also using machine learning to predict the height of Chinese men. Yes. So then do you, do you have um, any like ideas about like these, these are complex things. Like this is not yes, probably a yeah, you know, single. Is, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, this is another complex trait. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, because we have this population and this population is at the mean age of 19 mm -hmm. and we have the height measurement. We also have uh, um, the weight and other uh, measurement. And we would like to build a model to uh, predict from genomics to uh, height. And uh, if we have this model, then new new uh, boom uh, comes out. If we then if we, uh, we uh, have their DNA, we can predict the height at their nineteen age. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, and as you get more and more of the um, genetic samples you can have a greater, greater accuracy yeah, right, of the right. height. Right, right. Yeah. Interesting. And height is more likely to be accurate than weight. Right, yeah. right, right. Weight is so um, variable, variable <laughs> yeah. about what they eat, how often they exercise, right. all this kind of stuff. Yes. But height, you're pretty much going to end up being that, yeah, that yeah. tall. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. Okay. Um, in interesting too that um, for probably for those that are you know that are watching that are thinking well um, there are likely lots of other scientists um, around the, the world that, that watch the program and um, especially also you know PhD students etc yes. um, uh, postdocs whatnot that are just trying to figure out um, how do I leverage computational power onto um, genetic data sets um, mm -hmm. and to find unique insights mm -hmm. and so you know like you know you guys here if you guys want to you know come and look for opportunities Westlake has lots of unique opportunities where they're looking for um, people to do PhDs and postdocs yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and uh, be able to join a really powerful community yeah, of like course this. of course yeah, yeah. I wonder, you know, once we leverage more computational power on um, on challenges like this, what unique insights we'll find? Like, well, how many, you know, variants determine height, and where are they? Uh, and that type of stuff. Okay. And that's just height. That's one thing. And then there's, you know, there's all of the other. Well, what Check. about, you know, this one's really tough, but like IQ. That's a yeah, really, yeah, yeah, right. That's a really interesting right, one. Right. Right. Yes. Like. Is it possible to you know to predict something like that? Uh, but that also de determines a lot if you're sitting there doing uh, like you know too much studying. Uh, yeah, 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 too much uh, uh, distractive material. Even if you had a high propensity for IQ, mm -hmm. it might have um, been lower. Yeah. But uh, it could also be the opposite, where if you read a lot and if you worked really hard, yeah. and, um, you could be end up a little higher too. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is this is all so interesting to mm. me, leveraging computational power on, on genetic data. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then um, okay, so also there's um, a surname and geography study and an ancestry and geography study. Ah uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what are you guys looking at there? Uh, we um, uh, get our surname from our father, right? And we also uh, get our uh, Y chromosome from our father. And so we would like to see um, um, a person who have the same surname of, of me, like Zen. We, I want, we want to see how similar of our uh, genome is between us. Yeah. If we sh we have the same name, how, what, to, what proportional uh, of the genome we share together? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, 
depending on your last name, if it's the same, you may have a higher. No, we cannot say that because, uh, uh, for example, uh, people with the name of Zheng, like me, another people who have a name of Wang, but I have a uh, uh, more genetic similarity with them. Yeah, yeah, because oh, oh, look, these people who uh, name of Wang, he is my cousin or something. Oh. Then we can we may share more yeah. Uh, genetic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, interesting point. Yeah. Maybe someone born in your province near you with a different last name you have more in common with than someone with the same last name but from the south part of China, yeah. you're from the north yeah. part, something like that. Yeah, that's the interesting yeah. thing we want to uh, do, yeah. Yeah. the research. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And then I was asking you about this too, um, the uh, metagenomics, in, this, yeah, in like, this sense you guys are doing proteomics. Yes. On the 6,000. Yeah. And then what do you guys want to find with doing metagenomics studies on the data? Researchers would like to link their microbiota to uh, different disease. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, I think is to um, trying to do the intervention. Yes of all this disease. So what we want to do is to link the microbiota to uh, osteoporosis wow. and to, to see, um, because we, we have genetic data, we have, um, if we have an, an, uh, other data, so we can, I think we can uh, explain more of this disease, right? Yeah. Osteoporosis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the more you have these metagenomic data, proteomics, microbiota, all this type of stuff sequenced, yeah. you can potentially uh, come in with an intervention through the microbiome. Maybe, yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do different interventions. Yeah, yeah, yeah interesting to tackle yeah. complex disease, yes. osteoporosis and more. Okay, and then what do you think that, you know, having these biobanks mm -hmm. um, what will be the big thing like if we have the 30 million um, reference for the variants um, in Chinese and then we do that for Indian and African and you know your Europeans already done South American blah 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 you just keep going yeah what insights are you most excited about that bringing for Chinese and for all these other populations around the world um, that's the prediction of a disease. Yeah. To do the prediction of a disease for different for for uh, for the specific population. Yeah. yeah. If because we cannot use the genetic data of European population to predict the uh, disease in Chinese population. Yeah. 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 How much um, overlap is there with um, European? population genetics with uh, Chinese. Is there, you know, out of these variants, out of these 30 yeah. million variants, yeah, how many yeah, is In fact, most of them are overlap. Most overlap. Yeah, most of them are overlap. But, I mean, um, uh, for the common variant, most of them are overlap. For common variants. Yeah. Okay. Okay. For the rare, uh, each each population have their own unique reg, rare genetic variant. Interesting. And um, for but uh, um, like is osteoporosis rare? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. No, it's not no, rare. The, I, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. The, I mean the rare genetic variant, not the not the not rare, rare disease. disease. Yeah, yeah. Oh, rare genetic variants. Yes. Okay. Most common genetic variants. Overlap, more. yeah, okay, yeah, and rare genetic variants don't overlap. Yes. Mm -hmm. What percentage do you think is common versus rare? The more bigger of the uh, population, then the more rare genetic will be found. Larger populations have 
uh, have more uh, rare genetic variants. More rare genetic variants. Yes. What would an ideal tool be like? Let's say fifty years, a hundred years down mm. the line in the future.、Mm. What would your ideal tool be like for doing the most advanced bioinformatics?、Mm. You mean the tools developed to do the、uh, to analyze the genetic data? To analyze genetic data and then to deal with complex disease. Yes. To augment humans. Yes. To make us better. Yeah. What would that tool look like fifty or a hundred years down the line? Um. Yeah, because the the genetic field moves fast. Um. I think one one thing is the prediction. Yeah, the prediction tools to use a specific population to predict、uh, disease for that specific population.、Yeah. Yes. So I think this tool can be、uh, a good one. Predicting disease. Yeah, predicting disease. But of course, we need the reference. We need the reference、yeah. to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it would be maybe something that's all in one that gets the genetic data, that does the analysis, that predicts the disease, that、yeah. gives recommendations. Right. The whole thing. Kind of this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How do you think we can inspire more people around the world to work together? If the data can be shared between.、Uh, um, Research group, or research group within one country or in different country. Yeah. Then I think the 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 problem is the data sharing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I like that answer so much. We have a big problem with data silos across the world. Um, across the big tech companies, across the big governments, across the medical institutions, the research institutions, etc. And so,、yeah. if we can more easily share data to provide unique insights yes, into yes. people's health, into their education, into their well-being, right? You know, that's ex. Like, let's figure out how to maximize doing that、mm-hmm. soon. Yeah, I like that. Okay. For young people, what's an important skill that they need to know as we go into the exponential technology age? For young people, yeah.、Um, young people at at which age? <laughs>、uh, young people in general today.、Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if I can group as young people. <laughs> Um, Let's say those that are still in the school system. Yeah, yeah school, yeah. high school, or yeah, sure. Okay.、Um, um, I think this question have different kind of answers in different country or in.、Um, With different cultures, yeah, right.、Um, because the education is di- is very different between like China, India, and the U.S. Right.、Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there something that you think China, India, the U.S., and other countries around the world? Do you think that there's something that young people can? Learn that makes them just stronger for the future.、Mm-hmm. The 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 basic thing is, I think they should well educated, right? Yes. I think. <laughs> yes.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree.、Mm-hmm. It's hard to say what is the best. Education system. Yeah, we have ACT, SAT, Gaokao, 
we have all these yeah. systems, but what about social intelligence? And what about spiritual intelligence? Mm. What about solving the sustainable development goals of the United Nations? Mm. So it's hard to exactly say what that is, but mm -hmm. I agree that the education. Yeah. What do you think is the meaning of life? <laughs> oh, so this, this is another big question. Um, we should make our life more happier. We should let our parents uh, live better. To we should have a, a happy family. Um, to um, provide. Uh, good education to our kids. If we were overloaded by our daily life, we maybe we have no time to think about the meaning of life, right? We, 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 because we don't know the world after we die, right? So we should live a bad life when we are alive. Also think about our family, our parents, and them thing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly why we ask the question. Because mm -hmm. if we don't think about why we're here mm -hmm. and what the purpose of this is, what my purpose is, what is the nature of this reality that mm -hmm. we're in, then we forget these very first principled yeah. questions. Yeah, right, right. And then we just go and just do whatever right, the, right. sometimes the economy or sometimes <laughs> politics or media yes, or yes, whatever yes. determine our life instead of right. ourselves yes yeah 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 but in daily life we we always think about this the politics the economics the the also the project i need to finish right let's um if we overload by our daily list kind of things maybe we forgot to think about the meaning of life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I appreciated how during the conversation we were both a little bit uh, hesitant about the future of genetic engineering because to be to have this seventh generation principle. So you have to think about what am I doing right now and how is it going to affect seven generations down the line? Yeah, yeah. So that you don't just say, do that genetic edit and you know, <laughs> see what happens, hope it's all good. No, so yeah. doing like biological simulations, all these types of things to make sure that what we're doing is uh, gonna be healthy is very important. Mm -hmm. um, do you have uh, that mentality that you carry with you about genetic engineering you're a little bit more conservative um, about it um, yes I, I think uh, scientific uh, society they, they all I think they all uh, have conserved uh, attitude to this question to this yeah, yeah. to the genetic editing yeah yeah yeah, the, I am starting to feel that more and more. It's important to have open-mindedness uh, and a little bit of liberalness to be able to run the experiments mm. over time yeah. and find out, okay, the healthy ones are, are good that so we can start maybe implementing those. Um, but to um, be very also um, cautious about what could be some of the long-term effects of incorrect right. decisions right. Um, can be very bad, yes, yes. What do you think is the role of love in our world? We care about our parents, we care about uh, our wife, we care about our children. Yeah. Love is everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do you think that this 
is a simulation? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer this question. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Mm -hmm. Love. Why? Um, because um, because love is everywhere, and love makes us care about this world, care about peoples around us. Yeah. Yeah. With that more love we can care more about each other and the world yes yeah yeah Hufang, thank you so much for coming on to our show this <laughs> thank you thank such you. a pleasure thank you thank, thank you. you yeah In th incredible discoveries and <laughs> thank you thank you yeah. Yeah. yes we're super looking forward to all of the next advancements that you're doing in population genetics and complex disease. Mm -hmm. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Have more conversations with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online about population genetics and about complex disease, about all these other topics that we talked about on the show, about genetics for all, about creating these biobanks in China and in all these other countries around the world making better tools for analyzing these large genetic data sets, the different vari variants in genetics that we were talking about, have more conversations about solving these complex diseases and living more healthy and happy lives. Also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the leaders around the world that you believe in, support them and help them grow. You can find all of our links below so we can do, you continue doing cool things like coming on site to beautiful places like Westlake University and interviewing some of the great principal investigators here. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in and we will see you soon. Peace. <laughs> That's a wrap. Good job. Good <laughs> thank job. You, thank you. Good job. Okay.